I bought this truck new in 1997 and the interior has been covered and looks like new but it got caught in a hailstorm so I'm going to restore it. Before I decided to paint this truck I tried to get someone to paint these wheels so I had some friends that owned body shops and I asked them about an estimate on this and they wouldn't even touch it. Nobody would take this job on. After I painted these wheels, I see why nobody would want to take this job on. I had 20 hours in each wheel because I wanted to save the original paint and primer on the painted part. If I had not wanted to save the original paint and primer on the painted parts of these wheels, I could have used aircraft stripper and this job would have gone a lot quicker. These wheels have a real fine machined surface to them. In other words, the wheel was actually painted and then machined on a lathe to give it that machined finish. Now here's the problem with the machine finish. If you scuff through that clear with sandpaper and disturb that original machined finish, you have really got a problem. So I started removing the clear with lacquer thinner. Now I found out a much easier way to do this after I did the first wheel. The first wheel took me a long time. First, you need to soften that clear, and what you do is this. You wet a sock, not dripping wet, and don't get it on your painted surface. Wet down that wheel, and wait about five seconds, wet it down again. Wait another five seconds, wet it down again. Do this on small areas at a time, like a spoke, like one spoke at a time. Now, what this does is soften that clear to the point that you can remove it with a sock turned wrong side out with rough side out. When you rub that clear with a sock turned wrong side out, a dry sock, that softened clear will start to ball up and roll right off the wheel. It works so good. Whereas if you tried to keep rubbing it with a sock uh, wet with lacquer thinner, it would just continue to smear it and melt it. Once I learned how to do this, it went a lot quicker than the first wheel did. But I want to emphasize again, on a machined wheel, not a smooth chrome wheel or smooth aluminum wheel, on a machined wheel you cannot use any kind of uh, sandpaper or scuff pad. You will scratch that machined finish and there's no way to duplicate it. Now you can see here where I've taped off the valve stem and I've made a little cardboard insert for the center to mask it off. Now I have masked off the clean wheel and masked it off to where I can paint the gray areas, the metallic gray areas. And I mask off the back of the wheel too because I want to paint the back, as you see here, gray, but leave the rest of the wheel aluminum. Now I've painted the gray areas with PPG base coat, two coats. All the gray areas to be painted were scuffed lightly with a gray scotch bright pad and cleaned with grease and wax remover. I painted the front side first and then I did the back side. Now here's the front side of the wheel and it's completed. It's painted and cleared. Now I'm going to do the back side. I cleaned the back side of this wheel as good as I could. Like I say, this is not going to be a show truck. Now, I'm very sensitive to chemicals, and so I used an outside air source, uh, supplied air respirator, to remove this clear because I tried it without it, and the melted clear gave me an intense migraine. Here I've degreased and cleaned the back side of this wheel as clean as possible. And, of course, I removed any wheel weights. Now, the hubcaps on this 97S10, they also have a machined finish. And I'm glad I started with the hubcaps because I realized my mistake by using uh, a scuff pad and sandpaper to remove that clear. I actually scratched into the machine finish. So I learned the hard way. So then what I had to do was to use, uh, after I stripped the clear, I had to polish that. I had to polish all the machine surface out of it till it was bright and shiny. 
Then I took my back pad on my buffer and trimmed it down to where this little center cap would snap right over it and hold it firmly and rotate that uh, rotate that center cap and using gray scotch Bright pad wet with a little water and detergent then I put that finish right back in it so good that you can't tell the difference from stock I mean it turned out perfect chuck your buffer up in a vise or something to hold it solid and let it spin at just a couple of hundred rpm so you can obtain this finish now this isn't a very good photo but once cleared this looked factory it looked brand new there is so much time in taping and masking these wheels but if you want a professional job take your time and do it right i used that 3m fine line tape in some areas because a uh, regular masking tape wouldn't flex enough to do what I w wanted to do. When I had finished removing all the clear, then I wet sanded the painted parts, scuffed them with uh, a gray scotch pad, taped them off, and shot the gray part. And after the gray part was done, three coats of European clear. I used PPG products on everything on this truck, paint, primers. I was careful not to soften the painted part on these hubcaps and the painted part was okay so all I had to do is lightly scuff it after cleaning for clear coat. These hubcaps by the way are out of production now. You can't find the original GM. You can find some aftermarket junk made in China. Now when I restored this truck I just restored it for use. Although it'll be well taken care of It'll never be in a car show, per se. Uh, I could have done a better job on these wheels if I'd have removed the tires. Yes, that's true. But like I say, this isn't a show truck. I found a better photo of this finished center cap with a machined finish. It turned out absolutely perfect. I bought this truck new in 1997. The interior looks like new because I've always kept it covered. But after having the truck for about two months, it got caught in a hailstorm and just pecked that paint down to the primer all over. Real small chips. I decided then just to go ahead and use this truck. Uh, until that hailstorm, I was going to keep it pristine and just use it for show. But since the hailstorm, I just decided to go ahead and use it and someday I would paint the whole truck. There was a slight ding in the right door, and I couldn't get to that ding to knock it out from the inside because of an inner panel, so I had to fill it. I wanted to start on the tailgate first, so I stripped it of all internal hardware, and there is a uh, better vision of how this is done. If you look at my video about replacing tailgate cables, it goes into depth about how to take this tailgate apart. Lots of little scratches to fill in on the inside of this tailgate. Other than that, it was perfect. I wanted to take as much of this truck apart to paint as I could because that does give you a lot better job. But there is a big downside to doing it this way. Because you are painting parts piece by piece, it's hard to measure exactly how much paint you're going to need. Therefore, you lose a lot of paint. This is especially true when you use a paint with a catalyst because you have a time limit on when you can use that paint. I used two gallons of base coat to do this entire truck. You might get by with uh, six quarts if you didn't take the truck apart. Not only will you use more paint because of waste, you'll need probably five gallons of thinner to clean your gun. You have to clean your gun so many more times than you would if you just painted it with the truck completely together. I'm 72 now so this will be one of the last big jobs I ever undertake. It just makes it far easier for an old man to paint this truck piece by piece at my convenience. I had the time to do it this way and like I say it gives you a better job in the end. 
all the plastic lenses on these trucks needed to be sanded and clear coated with the exception of the headlights and they're glass now I replaced the plastic ones with glass if you use this plastic sheeting you have to make sure that you have the right side turned out towards the paint because only one side of this sheeting is treated where it'll catch and hold paint if you turn it the other way and start to pull it off after you've done a paint job those paint flakes go everywhere it can ruin your paint if it if it sticks into your fresh paint if you use small pieces of this without marking be sure to mark one side of it with the uh, masking tape so you'll know which is the correct side I like 3M products so I use 3M masking tape to uh, tape all the fine lines but you can use regular masking tape cheapo tape if you're going to be taping paper to paper or taping the uh, plastic sheeting where there is a paint edge be sure and use 3M tape it's the only way to fly I also like SEM products and you'll have to use this plastic adhesion promoter when you paint lenses and plastics I had used armor all on these plastic step plates for years they had gotten chalky so I cleaned them three times at least three times with Dawn and hot water and then I cleaned them with wax and grease remover you have to be really careful with these in removing them you have to spray the underside with some WD-40 then use plastic tools to carefully prime up this photo shows the inside of the tailgate latch in the tailgate a couple of the retaining tabs broke off but not to worry because you can use emblem adhesive by 3M that's clear to glue this back on as long as it isn't cracked externally you need to watch my video on YouTube about tailgate cable replacement because it goes into detail about how to take this tailgate and the latches apart I wanted to paint this uh, trailer hitch too it needs to come out of the way to be able to put that bumper on easier so uh, I decided I'd paint it too the center two lenses here are my S10 and the uh, two on the outside are my son's that goes on his full-size Chevrolet truck clean your lenses real good with Dawn and hot water using a scotch bright pad scuff them real good a gray scotch bright after drying these lenses and using a tack rag on them just go ahead and shoot the plastic adhesion promoter don't use wax and grease remover follow the directions on the SEM can and then you can clear coat I use three coats of clear coat using your hand and a heat gun so that you can feel the heat being applied here so you don't damage your emblem or your paint heat that area and slowly and carefully peel it off with the plastic tools that you'll see in this video or use a flat putty knife I reused my emblems by cleaning them with 3M adhesive remover and more than likely you'll need to straighten that emblem because it'll put a curve in it when you pull it off heat it and straighten it after you have it off I use these stainless steel spoons to mix small quantities of paint it'll cut down on your waste when you need just a little bit while I had the bed off I wanted to clean that frame and kind of touch it up I did that with a brush in some areas and I used an aerosol in some areas I used rust-oleum for the rusty areas of the frame on the lower edge of the wheel opening there was some kind of a clear chip protector that I removed by using the 3M adhesive uh, remover to soften and then I used this plastic tool to scrape it off this is actually a caulking removal tool that I bought at Lowe's Hardware and just happened to have it works great for scraping adhesive off where emblems were you will need a set of plastic tools like these from Harbor Freight so you don't do damage to your plastic step plates and other parts 
This bed had so many scratches over the years. It took so much sanding and filling in with spot putty. I never dry sand unless I've got a part ready for paint and it needs a little touching up and I don't want to get it wet. Using water with just a few drops of Dawn and using good paper like 3M it's best to wet sand. That way your paper never clogs. It goes a lot better than trying to dry sand. Trust me, I would never dry sand unless I had to. Small areas where you sand down into the metal that are rust free, you can use SEM uh, lacquer primer. You can buy it at several different places in the aerosol can. It'll save you from mixing primer for your spray gun. I have removed the corner plastic pieces from the bed. It uses plastic rivets to hold them in place. There were a couple of small dents in the bottom of this bed that you could not reach to knock out. Therefore, I had to fill them. But I never fill a dent. I always try to knock it out as much as I can first. The less plastic filler you use, the better off you are. Now, although I've been doing body work for about 30 years now, that is not my profession. I'm a mechanic by trade. Body work is just a hobby. So you're going to have many people disagree with the way I do things, but listen, it works for me. It'll probably work for you. Be sure and remember this. If you have a deep scratch, don't try to sand it out because you'll have a little dip that you'll see after it's painted. Always fill it with spot putty and then sand it smooth and you won't have that little dip. I had to do this bed several times to find all the places. When I'd see a place, I'd mark it with a little bit of masking tape. And it took, uh, oh, I guess three or four times going over this bed to get all the places the way I wanted them. I even filled in some of the worst spot wells. I didn't try to get them all because, like I say, this is not going to be a show truck. Now, a stiff parts brush like this is great for getting debris out of corners and in cracks. You'll need to do that. So now I'm going to clean the frame, paint it. Now, I did the wheels first, and they're finished, and of course, back on the truck, so I could move it around. Uh, here I've cleaned the frame some more. Just about ready to spray sealer on the inside of the bed walls. Now I've got the uh, inside of the bed, the side walls, I've got them uh, sealed with sealer and I'm ready to paint. Too much to try to do the floor and the side walls. Uh, I needed to get up in there to do a good job. Masking off the outside of the bed so I don't get overspray all over everything. Now I'm masking off the sidewalls, getting ready to spray the floor of the bed. I have it masked off, cleaned with wax and grease remover, intact and ready to spray. Well, I'm happy with this. It turned out real well for an old man, considering I don't have a spray booth. Now I've started taping off so I can mask off the entire bed to shoot the exterior of the bed. All masked off and ready to shoot. And by the way, all the original paint is wet sanded with 3M 400 paper. And now the bed's complete. Be sure to inspect your base coat really thoroughly before you shoot clear coat on it so you'll know where the sags are and what the sags pertain to. If you have a sag or a run in your base coat, you're going to have to sand it out and shoot more base coat on it because metallic base coat, the metallic particles tend to uh, gather up in the run or in the sag in places and you cannot remove it by just sanding it. It's going to show you'll have to shoot back over it. That is, if it's metallic. If you're sure that the run or the sag is in the clear coat, that can be removed, but it is a very delicate procedure. Uh, if it's a real thick sag or run, you can start with 400 paper and work your way up to, say, 2,500. But the minor sag that I had, I had a couple of them. 
and so I started with a thousand grit, of course wet sanding, with a small wooden block being careful to apply pressure just to the top of that run or sag. From thousand grit to 1500 to 2000 to 2500 and then uh, I hand compounded it out. The only actual body damage to this truck was a few years ago a guy rolled into the back of this bumper and barely tapped it knocking a shallow dent in it. Well I couldn't get to it at that time to uh, knock the dent out to work the dent out so I just filled it and so now I've taken all the dent out of it. SCM makes a heavy body primer to fill in small scratches in an aerosol can. I also use that in places like right here. Now I'm getting ready to paint all the bed aprons. They're plastic, but you don't have to use adhesion promoters since they've already been painted. You don't even have to use a flex agent because they don't flex that much. Just wet sand with 400 paper and then uh, dry and then of course clean with wax and grease remover. Usually when you spray over factory paint, you won't have to use a sealer. But I would definitely use a sealer if you don't know what kind of paint was on the car, if it was some off-brand or aerosol, or something like that. You definitely need a sealer. But in some cases, you can get by without it. Doing without sealer when you can, of course, will cut the cost and time dramatically. That is your call. Use sealer if there's any doubt at all. Now, another thing I always do is... Uh, Right before the final blow off with an air gun and tacking, I wet the floor down, the entire floor down, to catch any dust that might be in the air. Like I say, I don't have a spray booth. I do have uh, uh, spray booth filters uh, that I use uh, along with this wash pit, and it works out fairly good, but you still get a little bit of trash. Some people say never paint when it's raining, but if you stop and think about it, how many body shops would have to close down if that were true? So that's just an old wife's tale there, or an old body man's tale there, I guess I should say. There's two schools of thought on plastic filler on Bondo. Some say to use it on bare metal, others swear to prime it first. Personally, I believe in priming it first because Bondo or plastic filler will stick to the primer as good as it will the metal. And by priming it with a good epoxy primer, you're going to make sure that you don't have any rust under the Bondo. Now, Bondo is a porous material. That's the reason I believe in priming the bare metal first. I'm ready to paint the cab now. And the first thing that will have to be done is all the black plastic trim around the windshield and the windows and the back window will have to be primed with adhesion promoter and painted with a black base coat. I painted some small items too while I was at it with base coat clear coat and this is the cap that goes inside the trailer hitch. And I also painted the trailer hitch lock. Now these are cowl pieces that go around the front windshield, at the base of the windshield. They were chalky, so I scuffed and primed and used adhesion promoter and painted them black base coat, three coats of clear coat. Follow the directions very carefully on this SEM adhesion promoter because uh, there's a time limit when you're ready to spray. Because these S10 mirrors have motors in them, they're fairly heavy and they tend to crack at the base. I had some cracks. You need to check yours really closely before you paint them because chances are they are cracked or even broken and you'll have to use a plastic epoxy to repair them before you do your paint. Again, these mirrors are scuffed and cleaned with wax and grease remover and sprayed with two coats of base coat, three coats of clear. And, of course, I wanted to do the wiper arms, too, to do the job right. Yes, I know mine is an SS, but it does have the factory cam. Mine's an LS, but I like the SS emblem, so I put those on shortly after I bought it. The paint on this tag was still in good shape, so I just clear-coated it. Three coats of clear. 
you will have so many small parts if you do your truck the way I've done mine. Use plastic bags and put your parts in them and mark them as to where they go. You'll have so many little screws and bolts that'll have to be painted too. This is the door latch assembly. And these are the two tailgate latch assemblies. As you take this tailgate apart, be sure and mark right and left, mark your rods how they go, and be sure and mark your holes on the latch assembly where the rods go, because this is a little complicated. And of course, this is the lower plastic cowl piece underneath the front windshield. And here's the trailer hitch and the mirrors and the trailer hitch lock that I've already painted. And these are the plastic covers for the wipers. Be sure and use adhesion promoter on those too. Now this is base coat clear coat on this trailer hitch. Much better finish than what was on it when I bought it new. Because this front license plate holder had been arm rolled so much through the years it had to be cleaned thoroughly. Wash three times with Dawn and water and then wax and grease remover a couple of times. If any of your plastic parts are chalky, you have to use a scuff pad to remove all that chalk. Get down to good plastic. The temporary spare had never been used on this truck, never been down, never touched the pavement. So that wheel was rusty. I should have pulled it down every now and then and cleaned it. I didn't. So it took a lot of work to get this decent, and then I painted it too because uh, I didn't want the rust to continue. And these, by the way, are the rest of the latch that the latch latches into. These bolt to both sides of the bed. A closer view of part of the latch assembly. Uh, these use Torx screws that hold them to the bed. You must tape or plug all holes that lead to the inside of your truck before you start shooting paint, obviously. I have wet sanded most of those small hail chips out of this hood to where it will need very little spot putty. The washer nozzles fit into the hood by sticking one edge into the hood and then the other side just rolls in. And yes, I painted those too. And now I'm getting ready to paint all the black plastic trim around the windows and the front and back windshield. All this plastic was scuffed with a gray scotch Bright pad and wax and grease remover a couple of times before using the plastic adhesion promoter. I use my small DeVilbis detail gun to spray small parts like this trim and you don't have to worry about masking things off too much because there's more wet sanding to be done. There was a very shallow dent near this door handle on the driver's side. How it got there, I don't know, but it was really hard to see. I used the Evercoat Rage body filler. Very expensive. Better to buy it by a gallon if you think you're going to need much of it. But it sands far easier than the regular Bondo although I don't think it holds any better than regular Bondo would. Evercoat also makes a product they call Slick Sand, which is a real heavy body primer uh, that's really more like uh, body filler than it is anything else. It takes a big nozzle to shoot it, but if you have a lot of chips on your hood, it might be the quickest and best way to go because it will fill in really, really well. So all the black plastic frames around the windows are all finished and of course they'll get uh, the clear coat when I do the entire truck. If you'll be extremely careful in masking off your areas, try to keep it within a couple of thousandths. If you want a really good job, it takes a lot of time to mask one off and mask it off right, but it's worth it in the end. More wet sanding on the cab, getting it ready, and of course I've taped off the uh, third brake light. Don't forget about that. I also cleared that third brake light lens too while I had it off. 
it was kind of crazed, as they say. I used the plastic sheeting to mask off the whole truck all the way down to the floor to keep overspray from coming up under the fenders and on the frame. Don't worry about that plastic sheeting. When you wet your floor down, the water will hold that to the floor. Again, be sure to have the right side of that plastic sheeting pointing towards your paint. Big mistake if you don't. I packed paper down in the corners uh, where the door jams are to keep overspray from drifting down into the door jam. Now I have two coats of base coat on this cab and checking it real thoroughly to make sure there's no runs in it because you need to know where the runs are and which they're in. Are they in the base coat or in the clear coat? Now is the time to know because that depends on how you sand it. So now I have the entire cab painted and uh, there's just a couple of sags that I'll have to sand out so it's looking good. I'm pleased with it considering again that I don't have a spray booth. Considering again I'm 72 years old. I don't see the paint like I did when I was 40 and you need to see well and have good lighting. I have neither. Now it's time to start putting the whole truck back together. Putting the bed on and the, you'll have to put the bed corner plastic pieces on the bed first before you put the bed on the truck. Don't forget that. This is a new GM grill that I bought online. My other one had discolored just in a couple of places. Still looked pretty good. But discolored in a couple of places where water had run off the edge of the hood through the years. Any bare metal like these frame horns I primed with Rust-Oleum primer before I started putting parts back on it. Stop the rust when you can, where you can. Before I pull these emblems off the truck, I measured to be sure that I could put them back in the right place. Marked where they went, measured. And then what I did was uh, use a piece of two inch wide masking tape to use as a hinge. So what I did was to hinge that emblem to where I could pull it down, apply my trim cement to it, and then stick it back and it would be in the right place without having to uh, freehand it, so to speak. 